Hello and welcome to the B-Side Word. We are back for another week of us talking about interesting articles. I am sat here today with Alex. What's up? Dev. Hello. Emma. Hello. Uh, uh, oh. And my name is Maxi. Unfortunately, no CJ again this week. He'll hopefully be yeah. back next week, I reckon. Very nice. Okay, then, Emma, as always, do you want to tell us what we're starting with? Reusable toilet roll. No. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> no. There's an article about reusable toilet roll. But when I first, when, you, when I thought of reusable toilet roll, I thought it was just like recycled toilet paper. Mm. No. This is actual fabric where they have the clip push button things. Yep. And they clip it to each other. And make a roll. And make a roll. It's fabric, so it can't go down the toilet. Apparently, lovely to wipe with. <laughs> <laughs> An absolute dream on the bum hole. <laughs> but, For the bum hole. <laughs> but you then have to leave it in the bathroom in a little, you know, what bucket. Or something pale. Yeah. And then wash it in your in your washing how are you, machine. Yeah, how are you oh. washing this? In your washing machine. So you need so a completely similar... separate washing machine for yeah. your toilet. Yeah. No well. Similar to dirty nappies, you know, with you reusable nappies, cloth nappies. Yeah, they're baby stuff. But right, exactly. Baby so stuff. Th- it was this woman's blog from um Scary Mummy. And she's like, Oh, I did it with my, my kids their whole life. Um, so I thought, you know, I might as well try it. Because apparently, with um, the toilet rolls, interesting fact, toilet the toilet paper encyclopedia says that sixty nine of people, right? This is the first fact. Sixty nine percent of people. people think that toilet paper is the modern convenience most likely taken for granted. Can I ask you a question, guys? Yeah. If you're on a desert island, would you prefer toilet paper or food? Food. What, Maxi? <laughs> Food. Maxi, what would you prefer? Devin. If you tell is, me there's a study that suggests food? toilet paper, then I... Is there water with the food? Water, Do you get water is not in the equation. Just food. Just food. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. Food. Well, you thought about it. 49% of people chose toilet paper over food. Nah. They but didn't what know, you they, need they, to, they if you have no food, what do you need the toilet paper for? <laughs> <laughs> Very valid That's point. True. But... Uh, but you have no toilet paper, what co- do you need the food for? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about that one. Um, that was me too. Um, but basically, apparently one tree only makes about a thousand rolls of toilet paper. Only a thousand? Yes. That's a lot of... Is that a lot? Only. Well, consider how many... How big are these trees? How big is a tree? And how big is a roll of toilet paper? alone use seven billion rolls of toilet paper which means that seven millions of trees seven million trees a year for america's toilets alums only right (laughs) so this lady thought i'll do the right thing i'll use these and her husband was like not having a bar of it and then she had to just stop because of the smell because the smell overtook oh, the, the whole What do you think was going to happen? You're not flushing it down the toilet. I don't know. I don't know. That's Maybe you have like a wet a water bucket or something that you put it in. That's what she she Wait, had. A, she had like her pail ready. Why not just she use had like, like her bucket? A, a, a bee day or no the a bidet. Yeah, they're doing a all bidet. of Asia where they just squirt water at the yeah. Bottom. What instead of to... the to- yeah, but so they don't use toilet roll in Asia at all. No, um, my they don't, don't even use first? bidets in some of the places in um in the Philippines. They've just got like um a bucket of water, and then you've got a smaller pail, and then you just wipe it like you you use it to like you use what you got one hand full of bucket like a bucket of water, and then the other hand you use to wipe your bum. Your your bare hands. Your bare hands. I mean, it's your bum. It's your shit. You're cleaning it, and then afterwards you wash your hands anyway. Like. Is that too much? I think, like in my yeah. head, it sounds like I feel like, oh, I don't want to do that. But actually, it's probably it's more hygienic than using toilet paper. Yeah, because you're you're Wait, getting rid of everything. You don't. You, do you think when you wipe, you everything's clean? Wait, what? So you're so in that same logic, washing yourself with your hand gets you cleaner than washing yourself with like a flannel. No, it's it's the oh no, I'm not comparing it to the flannel. I'm comparing it to the way we traditionally use toilet paper. 
Yeah. I don't know how you guys are using toilet paper, but I get clean when I wipe. I don't know what. But do you ever check? Do you ever look? Do you ever look at your bum hole at the end and say, oh, is that clean? <laughs> <laughs> but if you were to use your hand, would you check? Like, I don't, no, I don't get how using your hand is cleaner. I'm saying it's the spraying part, which is the clean part. Like, if you go intense with oh, a the water. hose. Oh, the water. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah. Dev was just talking about wiping with your hand. But, didn't, but mm. with the water. Oh, with the yeah. water. No, I'm, okay, you I could not I wipe you with your hand with that, without you, water. Hand no, no, like... you need to. You need you need the water. You have to have water. I don't know. I'm a bit of a. Ooh. I think I that's like the Jones. worst idea ever. I think it's either bee day or toilet roll. Like if you want, if you don't want to use toilet yeah, roll, use a, you... use a bee day. I I can I I like the essence of the idea in terms of it, it's true. I, I guess I never thought about it. toilet roll is a very Modern very poor use of. Like paper and, and it's a waste realistically, but I'm with Maxi. Toilet paper or bidet. Like don't don't be trying to put your poo rags in a bucket <laughs> and then put them in the washing machine. I know um I know someone that used to have showers every time he'd had a poo. Even in like the daytime. Yep, even at work. At work. At work. Wait, what? So, yeah, so like he'd go he goes, <laughs> um, I'm gonna go I'm gonna do a poo and I didn't realise that he'd have to go back to the depot and have a shower. I didn't realize. I so, reckon like, there this was one is just time maximizing time your breaks. Things. Is this that same yeah. guy? No, no, it's different. He, 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 like, he was gone for an hour, like, an, like forty minutes, and I was like, and I was like, where you been? And they go, oh, I did a poo, and I was like, what? How come it took you so long? He goes, I had to have a shower. I go, what? <laughs> <laughs> this got weirder. The conversation got weirder and weirder as we progressed. <laughs> I said, so how many showers do you have a day? And he goes, sometimes two, three. I'm like, what? All right, whatever. So you just got to expect that every time he has a poo, he's going to be gone for like 45 to an hour. Does he carry fresh undies with him or is he putting those same undies back on? What do you mean? The undies don't get dirty. He's not shitting in his undies. Yeah, but I feel like once you've showered, you can't then go put your, your same undies back on. I feel like you yeah, need I'm, to get a clean Yeah, I'm with Adam on that one. Yeah, but you're having three a day. Yeah. You're going to go for a it's lot just, of undies. No, it's just part, it's part of the routine of a shower, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, like imagine you get out of your shower and you go, oh, get well, my This guy my clearly has back. different routines. <laughs> Yeah, he has yeah, a different I mean, routine. He has a routine. Very, very Showers anal. included in his poo routine. Yeah, so. he's very anal about that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> when someone comes over his house after so a hot meal, like, boom, and they're like, boom, boom, boom. we need a button to press. Do you, do you think that he only? Do you think he waits to shower until he needs to poo, or do you think he no, showers wait, independently wait. of poos as well? Does he think that everyone else does this? Is what I'm gonna say. Like, if people go over and they're like, "I need the toilet," oh, got an upset stomach, and he's like, "Yeah," and the towels are there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. How many times has anyone ever come over to your house and said, I need a toilet, got an upset stomach? Well, like, if, they, if they're there for a while, then they do. They have to. Well, yeah. They, yeah. yeah. They I think maybe yeah. that time we the not, details like that. People announce, <laughs> people announce it before they... My, I, yeah, like my close friends do. Yeah, like if it's a close friend or family, like, definitely. You wake up in the morning, there's four of us in here, right? I've got three friends over, or four friends. And then you're like, I'm going to use the toilet for a while. They might not give you all the details of what they're going to do, but you know what they're doing. I'm about to use the toilet <laughs> yeah. for a while. Hold on. Emma just said as well, and family. Yeah, yeah, When yeah. at any point has family ever gone to you? Just going for a poo. All our kids do it. That's what she's referring to. <laughs> no, right. they're just like, okay. just people in general. Family. Hey, mum. Hey, mum. Bigger hey, mum. Kids is doing kids No, is still. Not, poo. not just kids. Hey, mum, i got to do a poo. So go do a poo. <laughs> what are you telling me for? Go do a poo. <laughs> yeah, they do announce it. Even when I'm sleeping. <laughs> Can't wake me up. Mom, and tell wake me. Up. What's up? I need a poo. <laughs> I'm like, you, there's no rags left, Mum. All the rags are dirty. I need a poo. <laughs> oh, take a pillowcase from the top drawer. <laughs> <laughs> He puts it back in the drawer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the drawer. <laughs> oh. oh, bloody nada. Uh, poo rags. So that's interesting, eh? The the poo, poo, poo cloth. Yeah. I mean, we tried um, baby um, diapers, uh, the cloth diapers. I don't think we did. Yeah, we did because you, you had some and then you realized that it's just there until you have to put on a wash. And we weren't putting washes every single day. I don't think that was me. That was you. It wasn't my other wife. 100% it was you. Wait, I've never had cloth diapers. Yes, you did. 
What are you talking oh about? Oh my gosh. You used to, oh my gosh. At the beginning, our first one, you were so into like, you're like, you know what? This one's going to be all natural. We're going to like do it right. And then after like a week, you're like, nah, I'm buying nappies. Yeah, maybe. You don't remember this? No. Na- nappies I think we chucked all. I have a ba- n- oh, no, five hundred no. years to break down. Oh, and that's just the poo. I thought you meant like catching a <laughs> baby poo isn't natural. You should just let them. Oh, poo everywhere. Guys, I'll then... tell you what's hard when you've gone to the doctor for your baby and they say we need a poo sample and there's still a baby. That's horrible. Ooh. How about the wee sample? The wee sample. The wee sample is interesting. The wee <laughs> sample is <laughs> very interesting. You're trying to catch for it while baby. they're weeing. Well, a Mid-string. baby that is not walking yet that is still in nappies. You have to what get about, a whistle. But yeah. that must be even harder for a girl. Uh, I we don't know. Yeah, I've never had a girl. We don't know. We don't know. But it probably would be. But it was still hard <laughs> for a boy <laughs> because you don't know when they're going to wee for one. Yeah. So you have yeah, to. You do know. know. Uh, you do know when they're going to pee. You put your best clothes on. You take off their nappy. One hundred percent, they're going to wee on you. One hundred and ten percent, they're going to wee on you. You get all dressed and we're like, all right, I'm ready. Yep. <laughs> oh, I gotta get changed. Oh my god! <laughs> but the poo one, you have to take a plastic spoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep going. Wait, Describe could, this for what? Could, do we need to, to get talk about this? The... Yes, yes, we <laughs> no, do. Okay, we yes, don't. we do. Finish your story. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get a blood a blood streak from the poo. Yeah, and then get a plastic spoon. Yeah, tell me more. And then scoop. <laughs> yeah. Finish your story. You put it in the container, <laughs> but then you oh, have to put it in the fridge. Why? <laughs> Let it sit for three hours. Sounds like a, sounds like the instructions to like a, a half a cup of poo. Let it sit and rest for three hours. But I got it. I want. I kept not getting great samples. So after a while, Archie became aware of what I was doing. So he'd be like, "You get poo." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. So oh man. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh man. Oh goodness. <laughs> Guys, so something happened this week, earlier this week. Um almost a non incident, but it just made me think a little bit. Um, I was walking to catch the train. Mm-hmm. And as I was walking, it was raining. It was pouring down. So I had no hood on as well. So it was one way I was sort of walking with my head down to at least keep the rain on the back of my head. Um, oh, no. And as I'm walking, this woman that cuts in front of me and she's got a, a big umbrella. Um, but I'm looking down. And I promise this was in a completely non-perverted way. On, I noticed on her backside, she's wearing very light, light gray trout sweatpants. She had a brown mark, probably the <gasps> size, I don't know, like uh, that big. I don't know how you describe that. Oh, like man. Five, six centimeters circle diameter. Did you measure it? I did. I did. I took the, I took the measuring tape out. Um, but my question is, if you notice that, do you say anything? No. <laughs> No, no, you let them way. walk. No, you let no, them walk no, around. No, no. Okay, why don't you say anything? There is Wait, no, there's nothing look- you say to that person that will be positive outcome. There's nothing. Well, the outcome could be positive because they could go and sort themselves out, so they're not walking around with this brown stain and everyone seeing it. Wait, does it? Did it look like she sat in something? No, but it came, it came out. Of the bottom. Really... Well, no, this oh is the thing, right? Goodness. Locationally, it wouldn't make sense for it to have come out of the bottom. Oh. oh. But. But color, colorally, color, color. Colorally. <laughs> and, and markerly, the way it was marked, look, it, yeah. It, Do you reckon knows? that it's better for a stranger to alert them to this issue or someone they know perhaps at work or something like someone you know or someone you don't know this is what i've been thinking because i think someone you don't know is way more awkward so in the mo in the very very moment that it happens however i think there's a couple benefits to it one you don't have to see that person again yeah yeah 
so that awkwardness is dead. Two? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Two, you didn't have to get all the way to work and then go, oh, I wonder how many people have seen this. <sighs> yeah. You put a good case for it. Maybe you could just be like, hey, yeah. check your bum and then walk away. And then- You're like, how do you say <laughs> that might it? Be, I don't know, is that weird? Check your bum. <laughs> <laughs> it's true slap No, that, that's weird. That I realize like that's weird. I really, okay, let's take that one back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, check your bum. Hey. Hey. Um, but would you, you just be like, oh. on your bum. Uh, I wasn't looking, but- I feel like but for it's, the person saying- It's one that you, if you were behind her, no matter what, you'd notice it. Like, that's why, because she's wearing these light gray trousers and this is a brown mark. Like, yeah. you wouldn't, uh, you don't, your peripheral vision would catch it. I feel like if you were wanted to say it, your heart rate would go through the roof. Because you'd be like, oh my God, how do I say it? What do I say? At least a controller could uh, let you know. I don't know, I don't like, know what to like say. It's, it's awkward, right? But, but how do you say it? Go. How do I say it? Yeah. I go, you got something on your bum. Would you say your bum? Yeah. I would say it. Like, would you say you like? Bum? I wouldn't if I was going to say it. Like, I'm I'm on the side of Maxi, and I wouldn't say it. But if I had to say it, I'd be like, "There's something on your bum." Like, I'll say it as genuine as possible. I go, "I think there's something on your bum." <laughs> I just say as genuine as possible. <laughs> as genuine as possible. Like, instead, Wait, why do you instead, have to say the word bum? What do you mean? What am I gonna say? Backside. I just, I'd be no, like, I think, I think bum takes like some of the sting away. I don't know how the word kind of a genuine word. changes how I perceive the way you're going to say that sentence like as genuinely as I possible like, i'm not sure what <laughs> i think because you meant like my innocently. intentions I, when i say genuine my intention is to help her so if as long as i have my intentions in my head is to help this person then i'm all good like right so i'm like there's something on your bum <laughs> that is not genuine enough just put your hand on the shoulder and say look i'm doing this for you okay what yeah. i'm about to say is for your oh, benefit it's God. gonna sound weird but you got something on your bum. Oh. See, oh man. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I would I just know. say the back of your pants know. and then she can look and, and, and suss How it out. How about if you go to a lady next to you and go, look, can you tell that lady that there's something on her bum? Because it would be easier Ooh. to come in from a girl or a boy. Oh. Like, okay. yeah. So I'm saying to a female, I go, Did, um, like, I don't want to be a perv. But I was checking out her ass and then I saw this black mark. Um, <laughs> could you tell her that she got something on her bum? <laughs> Just the thing, like, and if then I the was... next person, ta- and then she tells someone else, and then all of a sudden, the one that tells her, there's about five people stood around watching. <laughs> and she's like, oh my God, everybody knows. The five so people. This is... <laughs> I find it interesting that Emma wouldn't feel comfortable doing it. Because, uh, like you're saying, Dev, I feel like if I was a woman, I'd be way more comfortable doing it. Mm. Mm. that being said i'm not a woman so i have no experience but yeah. <laughs> i like woman to woman like if that was actually because guy to guy it doesn't work because you can't you definitely can't go up to another guy and be like yo there's something on your butt i feel much more oh, comfortable really? doing it to a guy yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i yeah, feel yeah, com- more comfortable doing it to a girl than a guy hmm. huh. how, how about how about if you see snot on the nose how do you tell someone I, they've got snot i on always the nose? call it out now like I just, yeah yeah I feel like what I used to call it out to people that were kind of on my level, yeah, or below. That's rude, isn't it? Like, yeah, pow- yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> who's uh, most in control of the a situation? People below me. But like, if it's a manager <laughs> yeah. or something, then I never used to say it. But actually, I think it's it's good to say it to someone like that because it just shows that you're chilled, you know, or you got yeah. I don't know what the word is. Uh, how, how, Oi, well, Frank, look, tell it. Say it to me, Maxi. Say it to me. What? Say to me, like if I've got something in my nose, what what do you? How would you tell me? I oh, say so you've got something on your nose. Yeah, is that how you'd say it? Yeah. Really? Like I wouldn't change my tone oh. or anything. It's just like say it in the most normal way. Like I'm talking to you, Deb. Oh, by the way, you got something just here. Oh, oh my god! In, so in, in just just in conversation, deal. and then continue yeah. with the conversation. I can't yeah. deal. And with as, they, it. as they're yeah. doing it, I'm just I'm obviously watching, making sure they got it properly. But I just carry on. <laughs> Yeah, so um, yeah, the report this week we're doing really well. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I can't yeah so we're twenty five percent up. We're doing really. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yes, you got it. <laughs> I've got a major Mexico. No, no, I'll get it. I'll get it. Don't worry, no, I'll get it. And I'll lick my finger before I do Just, it. Lick my thumb. Yeah. <laughs> but 
it just how you said you'd say it in the just normal voice. I like voice. it. I like it. Oh. I like it. So, oh. so my there's a, there used to be a guy at my work, and he used to like not tell anyone like if there was something wrong with it. He and like, and I didn't know he was like this until like I like I was close with someone. And I said, "Mate, you got something in your nose?" Because like we're we're at that level. I can go, mate. You got to check your nose, and then the guy that doesn't tell it um doesn't normally tell anyone. He slapped me on the arm, right? <laughs> and he goes, "Why did you tell him? I wanted to see how long uh, like he'd walk around the whole day with something on his <laughs> nose." Uh, I know, you idiot! What are you doing? So he enjoys so, yeah. watching so, people have something on. He them. enjoys, yeah, yeah. This the, is, the nose thing is always a funny one for me because, like, oh yeah. So it's always a funny one for me because I'm because I'm taller. I'm very conscious of when I have maybe like a runny nose or a cold or something. Because I always feel like people could just look up and see more than you would normally. <laughs> Hello up there. But also, <laughs> shorter people may be conscious that they might have dandruff or something when you're standing next to them. <laughs> <laughs> but I have noticed a fair few. Uh, yeah, problems. it works dandruff. both ways. Ooh. Head and shoulders, my friend. Head <laughs> and <laughs> shoulders. <laughs> um, Snow on the roof. <laughs> Other brands are before. available. <laughs> but... <laughs> I think it was Carl, that Aussie comedian. Yeah. When he was saying, if you spit on someone's face, people are too polite. To, oh. The other person is too polite to say, you spat on my face. No, it's not spit on your face. It's when you're talking and there's a piece of saliva. Spit. Yeah. But it's not like when you say spit, it's like. T- no. Like when you're talking and accidentally spit comes yeah. out yeah. and it lands on someone's face, yeah. they would be so polite and not say anything <laughs> and just very <laughs> Just, just <laughs> as discreetly as they can, just wipe it away. Just, just get but, a hole. But the person that spat knows they spat, yeah. and then it's just this awkward. No one's saying anything. Yeah. Let's yeah. just continue. <laughs> this definitely happened yesterday when we were out. Um, really? We were, when we were at the museum, because we so in the museum they have like a, a a what it's like a I guess like a club that they open out a little bit later in the day, and yeah. we were in there and there's three of us and we're talking. It's really loud, so we're having to talk quite like, aggressively Le- to, yeah. get, to hear each other so naturally like it, more times that's gonna happen like some spit file but it happened like all three of us uh, to each other I really and know. none of us said anything at any point we were just like well, all just accepting even with your what friends what are you talking it. about who, yeah. who are you is the Daffy, all three of you the Daffy Duck Club <laughs> so wait so wait you saw you saw your own incident plus two other incidents happen and <laughs> mate Man. like I, like I understand that stuff right but if some if one of them gets in my mouth I'm like right guys get the frick, close your mouth and talk like Talk with some like control of your saliva. Far out. Have you ever done it to a girl in a club or something? Now now that you're saying that. Spit in their mouth. No. No. Oh Oh, my goodness. Oh man. No. No, it's because it's because we were drinking at the same time, so. Oh yeah. Did you you see them wipe it away? Do you wipe it's it so, away so they so they then. can see you wiping it away? Just no, no, I le- no, like I leave it, it until awkward, they've turned it? around, <laughs> turned oh, like just long like, enough so it seeps into your pores. You just uh, just like. Uh, why are you trying to freak my sister out, Waxy? Yeah, you know yeah. she don't like. <laughs> no, I don't. I um, don't. I don't even like people. But touching amongst my friends, face, you say it right. Amongst friends, you're like, Ugh, say it. Don't spray it. <laughs> I'm not I, sure I've ever yeah. said that. What? Oh, you've never I want said the news, not say the weather, that's man. Weird. That sounded like um, Rowan Atkinson the way you said. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Rowan Atkinson, the one who doesn't talk. Wait, what? That's Mr. Bean. <laughs> who am I thinking of? I don't know. I sometimes I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the one that was in Black Adder? <laughs> yeah, that Mr. was Rowan. That is Rowan Atkinson, Atkinson as well. Atkinson. Yeah, him. Yeah. One minute warning. Oh, that's so funny. Um, what was the article? I have, it I have, it no, there was no article. I have one more, right? Oh, I have yeah. one more. And this has happened to me at um, a year 12 formal. Mm-hmm. So I'm with my my ex-girlfriend, right? And across the room, across the table is um, uh, her friend and her partner and her partner and She's just, she's sitting there and all of a sudden she moves and her nipple gets exposed, right? 
and it's not half a nipple, it's the whole nipples out. I right? don't even know where to look and listening I'm... to this story. So <laughs> yeah. I looked I looked and I went, Oh, her nipples out and then I just looked straight up. Like I was like, Oh, okay, her nipples out. Um And I looked at my girlfriend at the time and I said, Um uh and I'm like not like with my head trying to point to the girl and she's like, What's wrong with you? And I'm like <laughs> the the nibble <laughs> <laughs> but like this this table is like a meter apart so it's not as if she can't see what i'm doing and she's had to tell she told her friend next to her that to go around because she couldn't get she was boxed in so she, her friend went around and her she said oh your, your nipples out and i went like and i was like i looked at her and she looked at me and i was like yeah i like you're saying this sign language like i didn't want to say it because i didn't want to embarrass you it was better your friend said it you know we didn't look at each other the whole night. Really? <laughs> we used to look at each other the whole night. See, I'd be more comfortable telling a girl that their boobs out than they've got a brown stain on the back of their pants. <laughs> oh, the boobs out, yeah. yeah. <laughs> boobs out, an easy one. I can just imagine that conversation, Debbie, you saying, a nipple. And then your, your girlfriend's like, you want a nibble? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> nipple? What are you talking about? <laughs> and then she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're talking about me. She, she looks down. She goes, no, my nipples are right. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, these awkward situations. They're good stories. Mm. Very. Done. This week on Max Facts. Max Facts. Max Facts. Yeah. Max Facts. What? The world's <laughs> heaviest watermelon. How heavy is it? <laughs> I don't know, but I was carrying one today and I said, this How is heavy was heavy. it? <laughs> so it must be it. It must okay. be it. What was it? How heavy was it? Oh, I would estimate three and a half might kilos. Might be. It's close. That's not the heaviest watermelon. No. Or is it? Oh. He's the false sense of security. Yeah, that is not close. <laughs> I would say mm. water, if it retains a lot of water. Oh, my goodness. That cloud was 450,000 litres. I'd say 500 kilos. kilos. How does 500 he do some equations kilos? in his head? For a watermelon? Yep. 87 what? 500. Eight, 87. Kilos. Can um, I no, do you know what I was doing? Or... I was... I was imagining bench pressing 20 kilos and thinking, would a watermelon be heavier than this dumbbell? Yeah, I could imagine one. And then I just guessed. <laughs> uh, in order to answer this, would you be able to tell me the approximate size? No. Emma. Compa in Emma. comparison there is to no an prize. object. There's no prize if you get it yeah. right. Guess the first guess. Guess the like number. Cheating. Okay. Um. <sighs> No, you've locked in your answer. Oh, it doesn't tell me the size anyway. anyway. First answer, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to say so, 20. What was yours, Deb? Okay. 587. 500. And 20. Is that right? Yeah. So the answer is 159 yeah. kilos. Something interesting came to my mind this week when I was watching uh, so I watched some NBA pundits talking about basketball. They were talking about the Lakers Celtics game that happened last Sunday. Um, as a big Celtics fan, I was very upset with the end of it. We lost by two points with some controversial refing that went along with it. Oh, um, these refs. I know these refs they just get on my nerves. So the NBA get pundits were talking about it, and the calls were controversial calls. But when discussing it, one of the NBA pundits said to the other guy, he goes, so, I mean, are you a letter of the law guy? Are you a spirit of the law guy? Because that's going to determine a lot about how you <laughs> perceive <laughs> the outcome of this. Yes. And it just got I me like thinking, that. in general, like, are you a letter of the law person or a spirit of the law person? Um, I am thinking, what is a pundit? <laughs> huh? <laughs> You, you know when you have you, you know when you have that. your fruit fruit yeah and then there's a pundit a pundit 
Pun it! Pun it! A pun it of strawberries. Yeah. <laughs> pundit. What's a pundit? You know there's experts on a game? At half time they talk oh. about the game. Like Charles Barkley and not like you know how they've got Shaq Commentator. Chick- they talk so about not play. a commentator. Yeah, commentator. They could be commentators a commentator. are typically in game as the game's going on. Pundits are normally yeah. analyzing after Analyze. the facts. Right. Thank but they you. they could be both. They could be both. Now that we've cleared that up. What's your decision? I, I'm I'm I used to be a letter of the law kind of guy until like I saw the game getting ruined by the letter of the law. Like there's just sometimes like as a ref, you have to understand the flow of the game and understand the dynamics of the two teams. If it's like, if you know, it's going to be a heated match, you let stuff flow to let it get out of the play system. And oh, then the see, spirit. I think the opposite to that. So you think like, so you think, so for me, a derby is a special game compared to um, a um, a normal game that you have yeah. there, where there's no not much rivalry. Mm. And then like for a grand final, I think that's a different game again. So in mm. the spirit of the game, right, you let it flow more so the players figure out how to like figure the game out. Let, let the players dictate the way that the game is played. Where the, like the worst thing you can do is a ref puts a stamp on the game and then it's it's the refs made the decision of who wins it. Of of his core because he wants if to put his own, his own stamp, stamp on it. Thing. Isn't that the only yeah. way that can happen? Is if he, he goes with the that, so he I'm more of a... the spirit of the game. If he does the letter of the law, then he's just listening to a book. Yeah, yeah. I totally yeah. agree with the spirit of the game and like uh, grand finals and all this and that. Mm. But with what you with the other one, like let's say you have two aggressive teams, you got to get on that from uh, 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 like straight in, and so they know. So there's no malarkey going on but if but yeah if it's like a big like game super bowl whatever it is you've got to kind of let it flow a bit you know i mean i mean if that's okay so when you said if they're both aggressive right you you let it you see what um develops for me this is the way i'd ref it if uh, you see how it develops and if it's like tit for tat at the thing you go look you pull the two captains once they've they've got they've got their aggro out you bring the two captains in. You go, listen here. You've had your, you had your fun. Do it again, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to step in. Either you sort it out, or I'll sort it out. I give it, I give the option. Now, once they've, once I've give that ultimatum, and they've said no, nah, they're gonna take it within themselves. All right, I'm gonna step in. But before that, I'm gonna let the players, uh, like, rough each other up. Like, let them sort it out. Like for me, I'd rather see that. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, uh, Alexander? I, guess, I mean, there's a balance, right? Um, because when I, whenever I see a ref make a decision out of a spirit of a game, and it's not necessarily strict with the like the the rules or the laws, and then they talk about it afterwards, there's always more outrage because it's like that wasn't the rules. Like you made a decision there, which was if it goes with your team, you're like no, nah, it's just a spirit of the game. It goes against it. You're like mm. that. They want the rules. Like is that against the rules? They've written down. But when it's the other way around, when someone makes a decision which mm. you think that should have been in the spirit of the game to let that go. For example, in football, it's always handballs in the box, right? Like, technically, the rules say if your arms are out and it hits it, even if it's a yard away, I'm not sure if yeah. this is the rule anymore, but even even if you're a yard away from the thing, you can't get your hand out of the way, that's handball. So it's a penalty. Like, you'll complain about it for a bit, but you're like, actually, that's what the rules say. We need to change the rules, mm. not the referee. So I think you can do the spirit of the game, yeah. but in, like, big decisions, yeah. you're better off as a ref just sticking with the rule letter of the law completely and just like then you can just defend it you can like it says it there don't look at me yeah so look i don't agree but it's written down no no i i I totally agree with that like if there's a handball situation like that's not i mean when i mean the spirit of the game i'm talking about like that's clear cut for me like maybe i can give you an example that's that help yeah so in basketball you have a coaching box which is the space that a coach is allowed to occupy on not the court because it's off the court but basically they're on one side of the court the other team's on the other side you have the table in the middle they can only go to a certain point they can't cross that point yeah yeah um so what happened in this game was the lakers were up by one point and there was a call which was 
in review a foul that the Celtics should have got possession from, but they didn't call the foul and the ball went out of bounds. So the Celtics coach got upset and was expressing his upset uh, his emotion. But to give complete context of this guy, this guy is the most like you imagine he doesn't swear. He's like darn, like the nicest human ever. <laughs> Um, yes. And he also looks yes. like that too. And he looks, it looks like a clean cut guy and he never expresses emotion. And even when he expresses emotion, it was lower, like him expressing emotion was less okay. enthusiastic than a normal coach's normal emotion. Yeah. But because yeah. he went outside of the, the box, they gave a technical, which gave the Lakers a free free throw and possession of the ball. So, mm. it, and this is at the very end of the game. So it spread the, the point differential and gave the ball the other way. So it was one where people are saying, yes, technically by the rules of the game, what he did was illegal to the game, but no ref in their right mind would ever give a technical in that situation because yeah. it makes no yeah. sense that to do it. That is bizarre. <laughs> yeah. I'm fuming right now. <laughs> in the spirit of the game. In the spirit of the game. I guess that's what that's more like, that's what I'm talking about. Like if someone, that's what I'm talking about. Like what Max is saying with the handball and stuff, if it's a clear cut that it is a foul or like I understand that you go to the letter of the law, but for instance, it doesn't impact the outcome of the game. Like if an action doesn't impact the action of the ga- um, the outcome of the game, then he should have. They should have just said, "Settle down." Like get back he, in your It box. wasn't in, like yeah. It's like the the stamp. The referee put a stamp on the game. That's what I was talking about. Like he could have easily said, "Look, can consistent. you please stop?" I, I thought he could have just handled game, it a different they never, way. Never ever give that. And then give it in this situation, you're like, well, that was, that's not in the spirit of the game because we'd never do that. But if they always did that. Crazy. It's, yeah. it's, so def- lots, it's definitely the one that they don't. So it's there's not lots of tiny a, like, things that just disappear past called. them. And that's part of the game. But it, it's hard to say like in the spirit of the game because the handball one I was saying about is yeah. sometimes you kick the so, ball at hand, it's clearly going out for a, a goal kick if it didn't hit the hand and they give a penalty. But because they're so consistent nowadays with that, you just accept it. You're like, you better oh, get your hands right. out of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they were very consistent that every yeah. time a coach steps outside the technical area yeah. and they always gave a thing, then fair enough, like let with the law. But they've decided in basketball clearly that with those type of rules, it is the spirit of the law that yeah. wins normally because they're not going to like, or spirit of the game that wins because they're not going to mm. call every single person that steps slightly out of the box. Um, but now they did it, then obviously that's... Yeah. So Although something... I reckon if you're a Lakers fan, you'd be like, Letter of the law. He stepped out. So this Too is... bad, so sad. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas we're like... Too bad, so sad. No. Yeah. So this is interesting because this isn't actually the conversation oh. I... This isn't the question I meant to ask. Um, oh. oh. But it was, it, me, Alex. it was intriguing God. to listen. No, because... One minute warning. It's the same question. It's the same mm. question. But now you've talked about it in relation to sport, I think it actually makes it a more interesting conversation because what I was thinking about, I had this conversation with Niall yesterday as well, is just in general, as a human in the world, are you a letter of the law or a spirit of the law type of person? Spirit. Letter. No, you're not. You're spirit. Emma's a letter of the law type person. In the world, you just mean like in daily life. Not when it comes to me. In a country. Spirit. Yeah. Well, it's going to be in relation to anywhere there are example, rules or guidelines or, law, this one, or like rules or laws queue, right? things are and then someone this. whoever gets to the back of the queue first stands there but if you're walking if you walk super quickly just to get in front of someone before they get to the back of the queue by the letter of the code which is unwritten oh. you should be allowed to stand in front of them but in the spirit of how queues work you should really wait for them to get to the front of the queue if you're just if you're nearly at the queue. Wow. If you are shuffling that extra foot more just to get in front of me, so, that's unacceptable. Yeah, in that case, I'm spirit. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah? I'd walk <laughs> past them. I would, pull, I would walk past the Maxi. So if they're shuffling <laughs> to get in front of me, I'd walk past them. I'm not joining the queue. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, <laughs> oh, sheepish. <laughs> no, but actually, I say that, but I always let people go in front because I don't want them to think that I'm rushing to go in front of them. Mm. Instead... Mm. That's, that's a, a good, very that's good analysis. Very good. Anal- good, a very yeah. good uh, I like that. Yeah, because that's an everyday type thing. Mm. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the B Side Word. 
make sure if you enjoyed it to hit that like button if you want to see more hit that subscribe and drop us your thoughts in the comments down below hit the bell hit the bell hit the bell hit the bell